so what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at this Batteria Power MPPT solar controller. It's good for 20 amps. It can charge gel, sealed lead acid, and lithium iron phosphate batteries. It auto senses if you have a 12 volt or a 24 volt battery. Today we're going to test this thing out and see how it does. So before we go any further, I did want to say I was contacted by Batteria Power and they asked if I would review this Sunrock 20 solar controller. Of course, I said yes, so they sent this to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. If you're the type of person who is triggered by sponsored content on YouTube, I suggest you go watch some cat videos. Okay, so here's the charger, and we have it hooked up to one of the cables that we made, and we're going to connect this to a battery. So if you look at the device, it says output on this side, and it says input on this side. I'm assuming input is our solar panel, output is going to be our battery. Uh, when you take a look at the back of the device, there's some other information here, and I'm just going to show that to you for your enjoyment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this down, and we have another cable right here, which is connected to my Red Odo 100 amp hour lithium iron battery. It's a 12 volt battery, so let's see what comes up on the screen. And let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit so we can see what's going on. All right, you can see it's saying 13.3 volts and zero amps because there's zero amps going into this device. It's showing that our battery is charged at 100%, which is likely true because I think I just charged this up for something. Right now it's set for gel, and then we have AGM and we have lithium iron phosphate. If I take a look at this button, it says set and enter. So if I hit this, it changes to a temperature control when it tells me that it's 21 degrees Celsius and 69 degrees Fahrenheit. Hit it one more time, and then you can see error code E00. Let me go ahead and roll in something from the manual that explains the error codes and the charge states. And here you can see those specifications from the manual. Okay, what I want to do now is because my battery is lithium iron phosphate and I want to change the setting from gel, what I want to do is I want to press and hold and that light starts to blink. Once that starts to blink, I just do a quick press. I can select my battery chemistry and then I can press and hold again. Oh, let's press and hold again. There we go. And now it's set for the correct chemistry. So when we take a look inside the box, you can see the manual. You can see some extra connections to put your own type of connectors on. We see some screws and then the device itself. Here I have a tiny SA Ultra and it's set up with an antenna. You can see that antenna right here. And I have it next to my charge controller. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to plug this in and I want to see if there's any kind of noise coming out of this controller once I set it up. And when I do, I really don't see anything. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to be as clean when we hook up a solar panel to it. Okay, let's talk about the two different types of solar controllers that you will encounter when you go to make a purchase. They are PWM and MPPT. PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation, and MPPT is Maximum Power Point Tracking. PWM controllers are cost-effective, simpler, and suitable for smaller or budget-conscious solar systems with match panels and battery voltages. MPPT controllers are more efficient, particularly in larger systems with higher or varying panel voltages. And they're worth the investment for maximizing energy harvest, especially in less than ideal conditions. So how they work, the PWM controller operates by switching the connection between the solar panel and the battery on and off rapidly pulsing to regulate the battery voltage and charge it. When the battery is charging, the controller reduces the current gradually as the battery reaches full charge. With an MPPT controller, continuously monitoring the voltage of your battery and current output of the solar panels and adjust the electrical operating point to harvest the maximum power from the solar array. It converts excess voltage into current, which can be used to charge the battery more efficiently. So we talk about some of the key differences. A PWM controller is less efficient compared to MPPT. The efficiency is typically around 70 to 80% as it does not adjust to the optimal power point of the solar panel. And the panel voltage must match the battery voltage leading to potential power losses. 
With an MPPT controller, they're more efficient, especially in situations where the solar panel voltage is higher than the battery voltage, which is typically the case. Efficiency can be 95% or higher, and it can maximize the energy harvest by operating the panels at their optimal power point regardless of the battery voltage. So what I did is I took the extra cables and I connected on power pole adapters because that's the type of adapter that I use in my systems here. And then we are going to take it outside and connect it to this bio NO battery for our solar panel test. So we're going to use my Renergy, I think that's how you say it, 100 watt solar panel. And then I have it connected to about 25 feet of cable that I typically use when charging batteries. I know it's a little bit long and we get a little bit of loss. We have that going into a PowerWorks meter that we're going to be able to use to see how much voltage and current we have going into the system. There is the battery of power Sunrock 20. Here you can see our readings on the PowerWorks meter. And it looks like everything is running as expected. And we're not showing any noise picked up by the Tiny SA Ultra. All right, I think that's going to wrap it up. The battery of Sunrock 20 solar controller seems like it works, does what it's supposed to. Um, the, based off of the initial test we did, it seems to be RF quiet, which is a nice thing. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop this into my portable kit and uh, try it out in the field at some point in time. Anyhow, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching.